Hi everybody, welcome back to my stories with you guys. I have another book here today. It's one that we read in the classroom that you guys loved. <gasps> this one, do you guys remember? The Boy Who Loved Bananas. Let's read it together and see what happens. Maybe you remember. Matthew loved the elephants and he loved the crocodiles. He loved the giraffes and he loved the polar bears. But all of the animals in the Metro Zoo, Matthew loved the monkeys the most. Matthew laughed himself silly when he watched the monkeys at feeding time. They would climb and tumble, wrestle and swing, and while they played, they would devour dozens of ripe bananas. How come monkeys eat so many bananas? Matthew asked the monkey keeper. I suppose it's because they love bananas, the monkey keeper replied. Hmm, said Matthew. That evening, Matthew would not eat his dinner. But pizza is your favorite, said his mother. Bananas are my favorite now, said Matthew. I thought you hated bananas, said his father. I love bananas, insisted Matthew. A little while later, Matthew excused himself from the table. Nine banana peels lay on his plate. I think something strange is going on, said Matthew's mother. I think we need more bananas, said Matthew's father. For the next two weeks, Matthew ate nothing but bananas. Banana bread, banana muffins, banana chips, banana pie, banana splits, banana milkshakes, banana pudding, banana souffle, banana tarts, and even banana casserole. Every day his father asked, wouldn't you like a nice hamburger? Every day his mother asked, how about a delicious bowl of spaghetti? More bananas, please, Matthew always answered. One day, Matthew was at the zoo with his parents, watching the monkeys as they romped, tussled, and did somersaults and backflips. He had just finished eating his 14th banana of the day. Mmm, said Matthew, I love bananas. Suddenly, Matthew felt a, felt a tingling sensation. Strange, he said, scratching the seat of his shorts. I feel itchy. Maybe I'd better eat another banana. Matthew quickly peeled and ate his 15th banana. I still feel itchy, he said, scratching under his baseball cap. Maybe you're getting a rash, said his mother. Maybe you're allergic to bananas, said his father. Matthew scratched and scratched and scratched. He scratched his itchy head, he scratched his itchy tummy, he scratched his itchy back, and he scratched his itchy knees. Matthew itched and scratched and it's itched and scratched until all of a sudden something went kablooey. And Matthew transmorphed into a hairy little monkey. My goodness, said Matthew's mother. My gracious, said Matthew's father. Hooray, said Matthew. The other monkeys jumped up and down. They shrieked and they pointed at Matthew. And a crowd started to gather. Hey, there's a monkey on the loose, someone yelled. Within moments, the zookeepers with big nets surrounded Matthew. Wait, yelled Matthew's father. That's not a monkey, that's my son. Your son, the three zookeepers asked, scratching their heads. Maybe you should take him to a doctor, said the first zookeeper. Maybe you should take him to a veterinarian, said the second zookeeper. Maybe you should take him to a barber, said the third zookeeper. We're taking him home, Matthew's mother and father said. Over the next few weeks, Matthew's parents tried everything they could think of to turn Matthew back into a boy. Hypnotism, acupuncture, yoga, foot massages, psychotherapy, and even mud baths. Matthew visited seven doctors, six veterinarians, five her herbalists, four chiropractors, three animal trainers, two psychiatrists, and even one psychic. They all came to the same conclusion. Matthew likes being a monkey. They said, he will stop being a monkey when he wants to stop being a monkey. Matthew did not want to stop being a monkey. He was having oodles of fun climbing monkey bars, swinging through trees, and shinnying up flagpoles. The boys and girls at school laughed themselves silly watching Matthew perform. Soon, all the kids at school began devouring bananas at lunchtime. Even the school principal was secretly gobbling bananas by the dozen. 
One sunny Saturday at the Metro Zoo, Matthew and his parents were passing the African Elephant Pavilion on their way to the Monkey Pavilion when a big bull elephant wrapped its trunk around a tree and pulled it right out of the ground. Holy guacamole, exclaimed Matthew. The African elephant is the strongest land animal on the planet, the elephant keeper said. Really, asked Matthew, what do elephants eat? This one likes peanuts, said the elephant keeper. Hmm, said Matthew. That evening, Matthew would not eat his dinner. I don't feel like bananas, said Matthew. Matthew's mother and father jumped for joy. What would you like to eat, said Matthew's mother. Beef stew, asked Matthew's father. Lasagna, macaroni, and cheese? Matthew smiled a mischievous smile. I want peanuts, he said. Oh no, he must have eaten so many peanuts he turned into an elephant. Just like he saw at the zoo. That is so silly. Thank you for reading this book with me and I'll see you again next time. Bye.